understand the principle of using primary colors and painting with them and how they work in a painting and how they interact with each other and with the overall subject of our painting. I'm looking at these photos and the outlines of the parrot are pretty defined of those birds, but they have very subtle kind of color variations inside of them. So I think I'm going to spritz my paper with water to just help the colors blend a little bit easier and then we will work on the details after the first layer is dry. We'll just start with the birds and I want to capture all these color variations. I will have to mix colors of course because I am using three colors. I don't have green and we have green in the reference. So there will be some pure color that I will be using on certain areas. There will be, see how this is more orange? So there will be some mixing of colors. How do we get orange if we're using primary colors? We mix yellow with red, right? We will need to mix this. We will need to mix this. And let's look at the tails. So this is a lot of orange and a lot of kind of neutral tones. This has a lot of purple in it. How do we get purple from primary colors? We mix red and blue, right? So, and the shadows are very dark, but we're not going to use black or gray or anything. We will stick to our primary palette, only three colors, right? So we will need to figure out how to do all this without introducing other colors and that their beaks are black. So we will paint all this with just three colors. So our first task will be to put a wash of color and to keep certain areas just pure primary colors and to let some areas mix, right? So this is our first layer. So let's get started. And you know, of course, guys, that, you know, with watercolor, even if you paint something, the first layer of something and um, it doesn't look right. We can add another layer, uh, kind of add more color, re-wet this area, uh, or we can lift paint, right? And make corrections. So I often hear people say, watercolor is so terrible. You can't make changes. Yes, you can. It's just, you need to use certain techniques to, to do it. It's not the same as with other mediums. So as you see, in some areas, I'm applying pure color where I see pure red or pure yellow. And in some areas, I am mixing red and yellow to get orange. So I'm getting close to this area on the wings. And I know guys, it's kind of might be a little hard to paint along with me because we have to move fairly quickly and I know some people prefer to just watch first and paint later. And we're getting closer to his pants on his legs. Let's make it a little more orange, balance the top. And the beauty of painting with limited palette is that, see, his feet are dark, but if I want to Cover that area with yellow, that's fine. Because I can always put another layer on top and it's going to look fine. Okay, with the wing, I'll, I'll wait a little bit. Um, let's see. There are some yellow feathers. No, I'm not gonna paint this. Okay, let's wait with this area. Let's paint the other guy with red. Or girl, probably, I don't know, they're kind of Maybe it's a male and a female. And to create orange, guys, you see that I'm not actually mixing colors on my palette, right? I pick up yellow on my brush and I pull that red. The red, that Signalier red especially, is a very intense color. So just pulling it out of that first little area that I painted is sufficient for me to, to get the orange. Now, if I need pure yellow, like I do here, and I need green and stuff, then I'm leaving this area for the surrounding area to dry a little bit. And we can soften the edge. This is soft, the feathers are sticking out. And then we have pure 
yellow and I'm getting a little bit of yellow on the beak but I'm not concerned about it I'm going to use some white ink uh, at the end to make tiny little corrections of where I kind of painted a little bit too much or you know not enough so just going around my subject and trying to capture all those interesting color variations. When I saw that photo, I was like, wow, I've got to paint this. This is just very interesting, very colorful. And I thought it's going to be perfect for primary palette because that, these are the colors that I see here. And this is all basically red, so we can go fairly quickly here and cover this area and this area let's see this is the wing so I need to leave some areas okay so this is the top but once again why am I leaving this without applying red right if I paint this red if I paint too much and I start applying blue my colors will mix right and I will get purple instead of pure blue so some areas where I need the two primers to mingle. I paint wet on wet, kind of all together, mingling colors on paper. But some areas we can go too heavy handed on this, right? Because some areas we don't want colors to mix, otherwise we will get a different color that's not there. Now, let's work on the tails. Let's analyze the tails. This one will be similar to what we did on top right i see some orange it's kind of subdued and a little bit of red which is subdued too i can do that with my second layer with the first layer i can very you know boldly and calmly paint paint the orange and the red so let's do that there's just a little bit of a kind of like a blue insert there And there's blue here, so let's see. Okay, this all can be red. So, you know, when I, I, I paint, I used to, I'll, I will be just like, I'll just throw this paint on and figure out what's going on later. With watercolor, this doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You need to have a plan and you need to look at the colors and figure out what you actually where you can go very freely and loosely and where you can't okay so you don't kind of paint yourself into a corner okay so this will be this guy and now i can use my primary blue my ultramarine blue for some reason I sprayed it but it dried now I can drop in ultramarine blue and get that purple going here in the tail and get interesting color variations and those birds they look like somebody painted them you know what I want to do is paint, let's do that, that branch. I'm going to paint it with just primary blue for now. We can deal with it later. It's not so important. I just want to connect these areas so I don't get an ugly edge here. And we can kind of dry brush it a little bit to give it texture. okay this area is getting dry so we can work on the wing my yellow is covered with red so i'm going to clean it off because what happens if we add all three primaries together right if we look at the color wheel so all three primaries together will give us black right and that's how we're going to paint those shadows and the, the black areas in the uh, birds by mixing all three primaries but if we want to get pure color if we want to get a uh, pure primary or a secondary color we can do that because then it will be 
grayish. All right, let's paint this guy's feathers. And I want to transition. And it's almost like nature, you know, did the same thing because he's got green going into, you know, yellow going into green and going into blue. So he's got already that transition from one primary through secondary into another primary. So that's pretty amazing. So this is the blue. And you can see guys, when I'm trying to paint blue on top of red, I get this dark purple color, which is not a bad thing because this can be like a shadow under the wing. But if you need pure blue, you need to leave white paper and not let them mix. Or what we can do is I can grab a flat brush. Let me see if I can find a medium sized one and I can lift. I can lift that red. If I need a little bit bigger area, I just want to show you. I mean, it, it's not critical, but I just wanted to show you how I would make correction. You do need to let this dry. I'll let it dry for a second. We'll finish this wing and then we will paint on top of it. Okay, let's paint this area. So there is blue here. And there is a little bit of, there's blue here, and there is a little bit of green. So let's paint blue. And then we can drop in the yellow and we get green. Okay, in the bottom, the wings on the bottom, there is blue. This is blue, this is light blue. Let's mix it a little bit lighter, and dilute it with water. Mix this. It's gonna be a little bit lower and there is a darker kind of purple area here. I'll paint it with blue and I'm going to drop it. I see a little bit of red there that I didn't paint. The darker area here and I see bright blue on this side. And there is um, a little bit of green there so I'm going to drop a little bit of yellow in there. Okay. How is this area doing? Still slightly damp. Let me dry it. So what we have left to do, we can we need to paint the feet, obviously, which will be they're kind of purplish, so we will mix red and blue. We need to paint their faces, they're not exactly white, right? So we need to do a light wash there to get it to where it needs to be. Then we'll paint all the shadows and we will be done. Let's see, so I need pure blue here. Yeah, this looks a lot better, right? After I lifted that red. Just add the blue back. And we're basically done. With the face, this guy's face, it's kind of in shadow. So I don't want to risk and make it too dark by mixing some paint and stuff like that. I think I can just drag some color from surrounding areas over here and on his beak maybe just a tiny bit of yellow on the beak and kind of shade it and this beak it turns down so it needs to be shaded slightly as well and maybe the face can be shaded a little bit it, it's pretty white here so we don't need to do much Okay, so just a couple of brush strokes. And I want to get those feathers to stick out a little bit more. That's why this flat angle brush is so great. See how I can very easily give him some more texture. This looks good. Maybe a little more kind of fluff on this side. Okay, 
Anybody has these birds, these parrots at home? They look pretty amazing. So couple tiny corrections here. Okay, this is my first layer, guys. All right, so now we need to paint the shadows. I think the best way to paint, to get dark color from primaries is not to mix them on paper anymore, but to mix them on the palette because the details are fairly small. I will have very small, you know, very little room to work on uh, and mingling colors, letting it run into each other is good on larger areas. So for smaller details, it's best to make a puddle. The thing to keep in mind with puddles is that the more water you use, you, of course, the, your uh, wash will be pale. You will not get the intensity and you will have to apply more and more washes. And the more washes you apply, the duller the color becomes, right? So the, you can not see the paper anymore. It doesn't shine through anymore. Even in dark areas, uh, we still need to have that uh, certain transparency. So we need to use a lot of pigment and very little water. That's what watercolor is all about, right? It's all water control. So I have smaller brush. This is again, flat angled brush, but it's a half an inch. And I'm picking up lots and lots of pigment. And I'm mixing it on my palette into a puddle. And I wash my brush, of course, after each application or try to remember to wash it because otherwise I will get, you know, all the colors muddy. And I think I told you that guys already when I started painting with watercolors, I thought you need to make like a diluted puddle on the palette and then apply it. But it's really not that you have to paint with watercolor pigment. You do need to dilute it with water, but only to some to a certain extent right if you use too much water it's just not going to work ultramarine blue is a little hard to pick up it's kind of hardened on me i think i need to add some fresh paint here okay so this is my puddle it probably just looks a little black for you guys but i'll show you it's more of a kind of purplish color but very neutral purple and that's what I want, because when I start applying it, especially on top of what's already here, it's going to look black or gray, whatever we need it to look. Uh, for mostly we need black, right, for these areas. So let's work on their beaks. This is my favorite part. When you start adding details, those darker areas, everything just pops and everything starts coming together. Let's see, where's his eye? I think I got his eye in the wrong spot. Let's move it. I need to make a little correction here. I didn't get this area right, but that will be easy to do. And he's got like little tiny feathers on his face so we can paint that as well those details and another way we can use this if we pull out just a little bit more diluted color we can use it for shadows like i want to paint a shadow on his beak so i'm going to apply more diluted dark over the wash that i already have there right And I can also drop it in right here where there is the form turns right on his forehead here. And I can add a darker area here. And if this is too neutral, all I need to do is pick up some red and drop it in. And that will give me that dark red without introducing another pigment or mixing anything additionally. So I can get all these colors that I need very easily. This beak is very sharp, so I need to make it sharper. And these transitions between different areas, if they're too defined, just clean brush with some water and smooth it all out. And 
we're good to go. There is a darker area behind here. So I need to do the same thing right here, right? So apply a little bit of my neutral mixture. And then drop in some red. And feather, literally feather it out, right? Because we're painting feathers. Okay, see guys how this area immediately came to life? I just love when that happens. I know this area is not exactly right. This can probably be lifted. That red is pretty intense, but let's try it just out of curiosity. I have some clean water, kind of clean water on this side. So let's lift, you need to wa um, wet it and then we can even pick it up with a a dry paper towel or we can give it a little bit of a scrub with the brush and like I said red is a little hard to pick up but um, we can you know improve it in any case important guys after you lift color not to start painting over it again because it's going to be all that grainy kind of uh, fibers you need to let this dry let the fibers settle and then paint on top of it i know it's very tempting to start correcting but it's not going to work all right let's continue with the dark areas <laughs> the shadows on the wings so you see that I'm using my neutral mixture but I'm also varying the amount of colors that I have in it by adding sometimes more red sometimes more blue we need to be kind of flexible and do what's best for our painting, right? Let's paint the purple feet. And grabbing onto that branch. And this one. It's not super dark, so it might be a good idea to dilute the color a little bit, but you can see the, the color is just perfect, the one I'm, I mixed, these giant claws that they have. Okay, now we need to work on the shadows. This b became a little bit too diluted, so I'm going to mix a little more pigment. Neutralize it with yellow and I need a lot more blue. Okay, let's do this. The shadows on this, on the tails, and these big feathers in the tail are going to cast shadows. So we need to paint all this. And you see, my angle brush really helps me. I can get thin straight lines I can get I can cover larger areas <laughs> Oh, 
this. And this area is very dark, so I need to add color here. And with the, we can darken the branch. I wiped the, the brush because I want to dry brush it. I want that texture. So let's add a little bit more texture to the branch. It's kind of orange on top. I guess we can use some kind of neutral orange to paint it a little bit better. Okay. This area is too light, even though it's kind of light there, it doesn't look good in the painting. So I'm going to darken it in this one too. What else do I need to do? I need to paint shadows in, in the middle here between these guys, right? That's what I have left to do. Mix a little bit more paint and paint a little bit of texture here between them dark shadow here I want to paint this shadow this um, core shadow can go heavy-handed because it's pretty subtle so I'm going to dilute my neutral color and apply it over the red it's also a little bit darker here and the shadow kind of goes down a little bit and to transition, see how I created a hard edge here? I don't want that, so I'm going to use red to lift this out. Maybe even drop some yellow to lighten it. It does need to be a little bit dark over here, I think. Okay. This is this, so we need a little bit darker area here. Oops much right the, the wing needs to be lighter let's drop some red there there's a subtle shadow here and there are shadows down here and under the wing Okay, this area is drying nicely. I'm going to drop some, I'm actually going to drop some lemon yellow there to make it lighter. And we can transition. There are like little details here. We can add some details. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for my birdies. Last thing I want to do, guys, and it's totally optional. There is a little bit of a background behind them. I can leave them like that, but I do like to connect. They're connected to these sides of the paper and to the bottom, right? And the top is not connected. I think some kind of vertical anchoring will look good. And let's see. So I have this neutral color. I'll show you the sketch, guys, that I did uh, for these birds and i painted the background that's that's what i'm trying to do right now but see it's kind of brown color so i think there was too much red in it and what happens if the color is warm it pushes forward right so we definitely want to make sure if we do this background that it's cool so i need a little more blue in this mixture make sure that it's not warm but it's cool so that it will stay in the background I don't want bright blue, obviously. I don't want primary blue, but I don't want that a lot of red in it either. So let's see, we'll just do some dry brushing with a big brush. And maybe something, I don't know, something like this on this side, just to anchor those birds. And I think that's enough. Important to stop right at the right moment. Uh, this branch can be a little more interesting. The feet dried and 
because I used a diluted color, uh, I need a little more definition on the feet. Let's just use, I think if we use just purple or like mostly blue, it will be fine. I just want to put a couple brush strokes here to make this even better and give them a little more definition. It's, it's one of the darkest areas in my painting, right? So it needs to be defined and down here as well. Just kind of finishing touches. What we can do as well is use white ink and make small corrections. I think I'll use my Dr. Page Martins. Grab some out of the bottle and I always put it on the palette. Don't dip your dirty brush in the white ink, right? Because you will just ruin the whole bottle. All right. If you have some pencil maybe left and showing or you just, you know, the detail are not quite as defined as you want them to be, just grab a little bit of opaque ink, gouache or pens, markers, whatever you have and just add tiny little details and they, they really make a difference. I got this on him and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do in just a minute. He's got like a little bit of like shine going on his feathers. First of all, I can separate the background from the main subject with white ink. And also I can grab some, some ink and grab some yellow watercolor and mix it in. This is a bad thing to do, guys, but I'm just trying to finish. So we can add some lighter yellow here, which will be good for our form. Maybe on this guy as well. So we can make them. And this area that didn't quite work out for me, right? I can also define it a little bit better with mixture of white ink and it's toned down with the color or watercolor that I need. There are some like lighter edges on these feathers. And maybe on these ones as well, we can put just a couple of brush strokes. And I think that's enough. So you see how it all kind of became even more three-dimensional in my opinion. I wanted to talk a little more about that color mixing, right? That we did here and um, how does that work? So it will depend on your subject, right? It's very important in watercolor to have a plan before you start painting and to kind of figure out your steps, at least a little bit. Of course, you know, paintings can go in different <laughs> directions, you never know. Uh, but uh, it's good to have a plan, at least approximate plan at first. And some paintings will be very straightforward with primary palette. If you took the watercolor hero uh, class, this was one of the first paintings that I demonstrated there. And it's pretty straightforward, right? We have primary yellow, primary red. In some areas, we allowed them to mix and mingle. We also mixed the green from yellow and blue and we added the shadows with just the blue color. The subject is not super complicated, but the subject kind of dictated the approach, right? And the, the way we treated this palette. In another example, also uh, tulips. So something similar, right? There are a couple yellows that are used and a couple reds. And uh, by mixing and mingling those primary colors, I painted the realistic subject but the, the palette is pretty um, the overall palette is pretty straightforward right there are not no very subtle complicated nuances or anything like that and then we also used three primary colors but with a different kind of approach we mix them all and we let them neutralize all of them on paper right and the effect is quite different even though we use the same colors the the overall result is uh, quite different. 
because we get much more subtle green. The yellow is pure in some areas, but mostly it's also mixed. And look at these areas, right? We let all these colors mix and create those beautiful kind of neutral, subtle transitions because the mood was different. This is fall. We wanted it to look more kind of subdued. Uh, the nature is going to sleep. So we didn't want, and fall doesn't have those super bright colors, right? Uh, and that's what we did by mixing and mingling those colors a little bit differently than we did in these paintings. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!